Hello everyone, I am Shalini Vincent and I'm thrilled to be here with all of you today. With over nine years of experience teaching ACCA and more than 12 years of professional work experience under my belt, I am eager to embark on this journey into business technology together. Today marks our introductory session where we will explore various facets including the syllabus, exam pattern, pass rates, essential skills, teaching methodologies, mock exams, and much more. I strongly believe in fostering a dialogue-driven discussion where each of your inputs are going to share our exploration. There's no such thing as right or wrong answer, so we are all here to learn and grow together as a team. I am genuinely excited to share both my knowledge and practical experience with you all and I'm looking forward to the enriching journey ahead. So now let's dive straight into our topic and let's discuss what business technology is. So business technology, we're going to study this. What, what exactly we're going to study in this exam? So this exam, it's a foundation paper, first of all. So it is going to introduce you to a wide range of accounting and business terminology and information about the business environment. It will teach you how the business operates effectively, efficiently, and ethically, and will show the critical role finance professional plays in achieving this. We'll understand the business in the context of its environment including economical, legal, and regulatory influences on the aspects like governance, employment, health and safety, data protection, and security. If we talk about the exam structure, it's going to be a computer-based exam, and it is an exam on demand. So that's the most wonderful thing about these exams, that once you feel that you are ready, you have completed the syllabus, you have done your required set of revision. You can just book your exam and give it at any moment of time when you feel like. It's not something like that, okay, the exams are going to happen only on quarterly basis and that's when you can appear. So you can appear it at your free own will. Now let's understand how do CBs work. So in terms of CB, the questions are displayed on the monitor. It's computer-based exam. So questions are going to be displayed on the monitor. Candidates can enter their answer directly on the computer. You will have a time frame of two hours to complete the examination. And the best thing is you will get the result then and there, even before you leave the examination hall. So you'll know how you have performed. So there's no after tension of thinking the fact Okay, how did my exam go and everything? No, you'll get the result then and there, so it's all sorted. And yes, uh, the official result is going to be uploaded on the website within 72 hours. Now let's talk about the exam structure. So the exam is divided into three sections. So the first section will have 30 objective type questions of two marks each, totaling to 60 marks. Your second section, you're going to have 16 questions of one mark each, totaling to 16 marks. And your third section is going to have six questions of four marks each, totaling to 24 marks. Again, the entire paper is going to be an objective type paper. There's no nothing subjective. It's, it's going to be either MCQs questions or fill in the blanks or match the following or select from the drop down, these kind of questions. Now let's talk about the pass rate. So if you see over the past half decade, the exam has maintained a robust pass rate ranging from 84 to 85%. So if you see with such a consistent pass rate, success on this exam is well within your grasp. Like everybody can do it. So with this, let's move on to how we're going to study about things, how we're going to you know, from where all we're going to study. So my teaching methodology is, so ACCA has a very, very wonderful feature which they have started. That's a study hub. So if we log into the ACCA portal, if you, and once you're logged into ACCA, you'll get my ACCA login details. Once you have logged into those details, there is different study hub for each and every subject. 
select your subject and there you will see so i've already selected that so here you will see all the chapters are coming up so all the table of the table of contents consists of all the chapters that are there in the syllabus plus you have flashcards also to do revision what exactly means what you have quiz for each and every chapter so once you have completed one chapter you can give the quiz to see how well your knowledge is how well you understood it then obviously there are some practice questions as well to see how you know what was the question category what you know how you have performed in each and every question so these are the practice questions now if i talk about i'll go back to the chapters again so you can see there are heads like confidence level notes bookmarks highlights we understand that everybody is getting technology savvy these days and you know since it's a computer based exam also we we don't even encourage people or students to sit with a notebook and a pen no what we say is even if you want to study you want to make notes start making it on the laptop itself so that your typing speed will also increase which is going to help you in your professional paper professional exam papers so if if i click on any of the topic see and if i select it talks about the confidence level you can select here rate your confidence high medium low you can select what your confidence is and this will show here what is your confidence level you can select anything add a note you can highlight anything you can put select a bookmark of anything and when you're going to revise you just go on to those specific heads whether like the important things you have bookmarked just click on bookmark and you can read the important stuff like remember in the books like when we used to study earlier we used to put chits so it, it's kind of like that putting bookmarks but you're doing it in a digital form now uh, let's just dive into the chapter so what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about today business organizations we'll study what are business organizations okay so first of all what is the first thing that comes to your mind if i ask what is a business organization can we define it does anything comes to mind somebody might say that you know a club is a business organization some may say companies are business organization but few people can argue the charities and hospitals are also business organizations now see there are different these are all different types of organization like school is different companies are different charities are different hospitals are different so with this kind of definition coming up it's very difficult to actually define what an organization is that is why a common definition was produced which says that a business organization is a social arrangement to achieve collective goals through controlled performance now if you see there are three components which come into this definition firstly social arrangement socially people coming together collective goals they have one goal in mind what they want to achieve controlled performance performance is being controlled now let's just study about these three components in more detail If we talk about social arrangement, as I discussed, it's a group of more than one person coming together and working. It can be a formal relationship or it can be an informal relationship within the group. Formal relationship: two people with the expertise join hand together, start up an organization. Informal relationship: husband wife working together or father son working together set up an organization. What are the examples that comes to the mind? If we talk about not-for-profit organization, we have charities, government, cooperatives, political parties, etc. In terms of business organizations, we have companies, partnerships, and joint ventures. Collective goal. Now, goal can be anything. Okay, collective goal means a goal is the that common objective which the organization wants to achieve. What is the purpose of the organization? What is it that they want to do? like for example if we talk about non profit organizations there if i if we talk about hospitals or if we talk about healthcare their main objective is to provide the best healthcare facilities to each and every individual if we talk about schools their objective is to provide education to each and every student out there right so entertainment industry their objective is to provide entertainment now 
and what is the objective of business organization to maximize the wealth of the owners because shareholders to maximize the shareholders wealth is the main objective or the primary objective of the business organization so the goal can differ from organization to organization next is controlled activity structured operations of the organization how an organization is going to achieve its objectives like it, it, it everything can't sit here right it has to be put a plan has to be put in place people have to be made responsible for activities and then only it can work around just imagine let's take an example uh, you want to construct a house okay you want your house to be constructed do you think if you only hire the labor so you got the painter to paint your house you got uh, you know you got all the other kind of labors to do the you know to get the bricks to you know make up the building and everything do you think the house will be made just like that it will not right because everything will be haywire you will actually need a supervisor who is going to going to supervise each and everything and see how you know what all steps are followed like if the painter comes in the very starting what will the painter do if the building if the structure of the building is not ready what will be the what will the painter be doing right so that's why a supervisory is needed so that's why all activities have to be in a control form there has to be a structured operations of uh, the things that needs to be done examples for not for profit organizations we have service operations fundraising profit generating activities and other activities for business operations we have service operations manufacturing distribution marketing sales and other commercial activities okay now let's understand what is the purpose of forming business organization and why do we even form business organization so it's always said that you know uh, it's better if two people are working together rather than one why two people are going to more bring more you know uh, there will be the capacity will increase like one person can get tired if two people are working together you know the work will be completed really very fast and there is always a limitation to one person capability like probably you might be good in marketing but you're not good in numbers so you would be needing some other person who's good in numbers right so that's what they say capability of an individual is restricted so to get more and more capabilities yes people join hand together to work together so let's talk about the attributes of business organization first of all is capacity having more people that is more number of people means more number of hours people can work together resources capital that is the most important need like if two people are joining together let's say if it's a partnership firm two people came together they brought in capital capital if one more person came in that person will also be going to bring some capital so the resources are going to increase then what a, a normal individual could add in so there is a large number of tasks can be performed if you you know if a group of people have joined hand together so like for example if you decide let like, let's say you wanna let's let's take a hypothetical example it's diwali okay it's diwali time you know usually your uh, your mom is helping your your mom is doing all the work or your dad is doing all the cleaning work you know remember at the time of diwali mom, uh, your mother usually says the fact that okay fine it's diwali come and help me out you know at least do the dusting or do this or do that right or your you know your or you your sister would be making rangoli or you would be making rangoli and somebody would be doing the Uh, outside work buying diyas and crackers and all those stuff right so you work together right the capacity has increased the number of work that can be done has increased the amount of work that can be done has increased so that is why they say a normal individual a single individual can't do everything right so that's why you share you join hands together and work the example here we have is a bakery meet the demand for its goods by having investors contribute capital for asset expenditure money to buy oven supplies you know you have investors and you plugged in money to the business so that you can function properly the bakery's workforce also consists of several people bakers administration executive distribution staff customer service personnel etc this allows the bakery to generate much more profits and returns than an individual alone 
let's say if you have a small bakery at your place where there's just one single owner there's nobody to help that owner and if you give that person let's say i i need 50 cupcakes to be uh, 50 cupcakes and one big cake by the end of the evening you know it'd be like too difficult for that person to process everything but if you give a team of people the same quantity of work they'll be able to do it in a much more faster manner second is specialization division of labor enables the individuals and group to become specialists in their activity right you choose your specialization i am a specialist in finance i am a specialist in taxation i may not be a specialist in art i may not be a specialist in dance i may not be a specialist in let's say in any other work it depends you choose your specialization so one person cannot be a specialist in each and every field you can one person alone cannot do everything okay so because specialists they deliver a high standard of work and they operate more efficiently so it allows individual to work in the role that they are most suited for and motivated to do like for example uh I I'm a, I'm a, I'm a finance person right if someone starts explaining science to me like if a scientist comes to me and starts explaining science to me and asks me to do an experiment I'll be like huh what needs to be done sorry I don't understand because it's a you know the work that is the work whom somebody likes they should do that work <laughs> don't ask anybody else to do that right example in continuation to the bakery example we discussed a bakery can develop individuals to be a highly skilled and knowledgeable in their position. They will specialize, they will develop specialist baking knowledge and techniques, improving the quality and the production speed. Customer service personnel will learn the needs and requirements for their customers and develop approaches to serve them better. They will understand the fact that, okay, fine, people are nowadays, they don't want processed sugar. So they're going to look for alternatives and see like, how well they can make those cakes, cupcakes, pastry, which do not have processed sugar in it. Or let's say people are, uh, nowadays they want to go all healthy. So they want to avoid all wheat flour, the whole flour. So what are, what are the alternatives that can be used against them? So all those things. Next is synergy. That is 2 plus 2 is more than 4. The total output of a group is going to be higher than the sum of each individual working independently. Individual specialization in organizational structure enables greater collective output. One person working together, one, one person working may produce, you know, let's say eight units. Two person working together, sorry, one person working together, eight units. One person working together, eight units. If you sum up them up, two persons are actually producing 16 units, right? But if they both of them are working together, they can actually produce more than 16. Probably they'll be doing 18 or 20 units. That's the effect when you are working together. I'll give you one more example. It's a very good example. See, you know in school how we used to solve maths problem and then we used to get stuck. We are like, okay, we're not understanding how it needs to be done and all that thing. But if you we, if we are part of group study, then we actually were able to solve the questions much more correctly because the question properly we were stuck at, the other person knew, knew how to get it done and the problems were solved very quickly. So that's why we see a synergy of 2 plus 2 is more than 4. So a continuation to the bakery example, a bakery organizes itself into departments which are highly efficient in their speciality. The baking department, they focus on producing high quality output as efficiently as possible. The customer service and admin personnel can focus on efficiently adapting to customers' needs without taking on baking loads. So it depends. If the uh, departments are uh, organized, then how they can specialize on their speciality level? How can they become more efficient? And at last is reduce risk, obviously. If the business is shared, if a lot of individuals are working together, then your operation risk is actually shared. That is, does not lie only on one person. So an individual operating alone must have to accept all the business risk himself. But if two or more people are working together, then it is shared. The bakery may be arranged as a limited company, which limits owners' potential losses if the business fails. In a bakery, 
a baker would be responsible only for the activity he specializes in. He would not be accountable for the issues occurring in other departments. Now let's talk about the common features of business organizations. First of all, stakeholders. So all business organizations, they interact with various stakeholders. Now we understand stakeholders, right? So stakeholders are like who have an interest in the company that they on the organization. So we have customers, we have suppliers, we have regulators, owners, employee, government, all these are the stakeholders. Asset or capital, assets or capital. Business organization may have assets to perform their operations and it includes your vehicles, material, property, machines, etc. Then is your operating environment. All business organizations, they operate within a business environment, which includes all the aspects which we talked about when we, at the start of the chapter, that's political, economic, social, legal, technological, environmental, everything. Next is managed activities. All business organizations, they have managed and controlled activities to achieve their primary purpose. So these activities will have inputs and outputs within an environment. They'll be in fixed environment where the input and output is going to happen. Next, how business organization differ? Now, first of all is the size. One can be small, one can be large. Small is like you have less number of employees, the available capital is less, your assets are low, your revenue is less, your operating locations are few. However, for others, you can have a large number of employees, you have a lot of capital, net asset value is good, a lot of revenue you are generating, and you are at multiple locations. So technically, a small partnership to a multinational enterprise, everything is known as an organization. Ownership, you can be a sole trader, that is whole soul, you are the one who has started the business and doing the business. Partnership, two or more people working together. Private limited companies, two or more people working together, set them up as private limited company. Public company, you, open, well, you have a public company or the cooperatives. So several individuals, they may form a partnership to formalize their share of business and they govern the distribution of profits. Public limited companies, they may have thousands of individuals with own that hold the company shares because they are listed on stock exchange. Funding, it can be via debt or via equity. Debt is you take a loan from the bank. Equity, selling shares to the investors. Next, we talk about activities. Organization performs different activities to earn profits. They can give, provide services or there can be sale of goods, either goods or services. A bakery earns revenue primarily through selling its baked products. Now, this is sale of goods. A bank earns revenue on interest from dispersed loans and banking fees. Now, that's a kind of service provision. Organizational structure, how the organization is fully formally organized? Is it flat or is it tall? It's wide or it's narrow, it's centralized or it's decentralized. So it depends on all those things. Like for example, a small partnership may have a few employees in a flat structure. A multinational company will have thousands of employees deployed in divisions that may operate independently. What is the strategy next? Business organizations, they generate profit in market by applying a business strategy. Whether they want to be uh, have a cost leadership or they want to go for differentiation, what is it? A business organization may be profitable by delivering output at a lower cost. And others might focus on having a niche expertise to deliver unique services. Example, remember when MI phone was launched, it was really at a very cheaper rate, right? And, and second, so that was when they were targeting like, you know, more and more uh, phones should be sold out at a lower cost. Or the geo phones when they came out, they were, they were really sold out, I think, at a, at a very less price. Or compare them with iPhone. When iPhone was initially launched, the price was high because they were having that niche expertise of, you know, iOS that they brought it to the market. So 
and till date iphone has its own rate like you you cannot you will you will never find an iphone apple you know an iphone worth to be 10000 or 15000 a new one you won't find it next is culture the collective understanding within an organization how do we do things around here what's the leadership style whether it's flexible or rigid formal or informal the communication methods the tradition symbols and rituals a bank may have a traditional risk averse hierarchical structure culture and expects its employee to dress formally and come to work at the office a software development company may have a more relaxed informal culture that encourages innovation and creativity so remote working is encouraged in them so it it depends on organization to organization so with this we come to the end of this particular topic so i hope you guys understood the topic and it's clear and with this i think we're going to wrap up this particular session so thank you so much guys it was really nice talking to you and in the next session we'll delve into further topics cool thank you so much